Hey there everybody. I'm here again doing another 8x8 inch canvas. I'm doing a flip cup today, but I'm using a glue and water pouring medium instead of my usual uh, flow troll medium. So I've mixed this up according to the recipe from the Pouring Your Heart Out channel. 60% glue, 40% water. So I just mixed that up by weight, sh shook it up really well, and then mixed it with my colors. Most of my paints were either um, thicker craft paints or tube paints. So I ended up with about a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to the pouring medium to be able to get it to flow. Um, my white is a house paint and it was thinner, so I needed a lot less of the pouring medium to get that to flow. So that was like, I don't know, three or four parts of the paint to one part of the pouring medium. So you have to just add, you know, put your paint in the cup and then add the pouring medium until you reach the right consistency. So I have this lovely dark uh, dioxazine purple. I have metallic magenta, yellow, this dark uh, phthalo green, and then um, some white house paint. And I have about an ounce of each color, and I put one drop of silicone oil into each cup. So I'm just mixing it up really well. Okay, so that's my pouring medium. Um, I don't use glue a lot because Floetrol works so well, but glue makes a different kind of effect, especially when you use a torch. So I do want to show you how to do it. It has its place and I'm excited to do it today. Okay, so let me layer my paint in the cup. I want about four and a half ounces of paint in here. Okay, so I'm gonna do green at the bottom, and I'm, I'm doing layers because I do want to get some streaking. Then some yellow, and then white because I want the white to kind of separate the, um, the purple and the pink from the green and the yellow. Don't want those all to mix together too much. Okay, so then purple and pink, and then another layer of white, and then back again with green. So the nice thing about glue is it is less reactive when you add silicone than Floetrol is, which means you can still get some definition in streaking and lines and stuff like that that you can't really get with a Floetrol based silicone pour. Okay, there's a fly flying around here and he's fixing to get himself killed. My goodness, you see him? Flies are the nemesis of painters. Okay, let's hope he just flies away. All right, we've got the green and yellow. Um, some more white. And then finally, some purple and magenta. I have a little less of the purple and magenta than the other colors, so they may be less prominent. Okay, and, and just a little white on top. Okay, great. So there's all my paint stacked up. This is gonna be a flip and drag, which is just a flip cup that you don't pick straight up, you sort of drag it across as you pull it up. Sorry, I'm distracted by this fly. So I'm gonna be doing a flip and drag, which is just a, it's the same as a regular flip cup, except I'm starting it on one side and I'm gonna be pulling it quickly across the canvas as the paint rushes out instead of just picking it straight up. So I'll give it just a minute for the colors to sort of flow out. 
and then I'll pull it across. Okay, I think we're probably good here. So I'm just gonna pull it very quickly in a diagonal motion. Oh, guess I didn't pull it quite enough. Not quite fast enough. All right, so I'm taking the leftover paint and covering up the corners because those are the hardest places to get as you're stretching it out. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of cells coming up and a lot that's not coming up yet. I'm gonna work on stretching it and then torching as necessary. I think my paint must have been a little bit thinner than I wanted because I am getting a lot of cells here fast. I wanted to um, have it be a little thicker and need to torch to get the cells up. But I'll never complain about cells and these colors are really pretty. Okay, so let's just sort of get it moving. Um, where am I gonna go first? I'm going to take it down this way first. Okay, bring the weight of the paint back to the middle. All right, now I will torch. Wow, do you see all those cells coming up there? Oh, and they're pretty. Glue is your medium plus torching makes really pretty cells. So I still have these giant ones, but I've got these pretty little ones coming up. All right, so now I'm going to bring it down to this corner, which that corner is already partly covered by this stuff anyway. So I don't need to go really far over the edge. Just kind of touch it and come back. Great. Okay, now I'll go over to this corner here. I'm sort of moving it back and forth. It helps to get your paint flowing without warping your cells too much. Unfortunately, I do have cell warping going on just because my paint is very, it's very fluid. Also, my canvas is pretty uh, saggy in the middle. I need to figure that out. Hold on a second. So unfortunately, my canvas itself was kind of loose. I didn't, I didn't notice how loose it was until I started doing it. Um, let me finish the stretching and then I will then I will figure out how to how to prop up the center so it doesn't all warp. Okay, I think I've gotten the middle of the canvas propped up here now. Usually I don't have to prop up my small canvases, uh, but this one was just pretty loose. 
So I'm going to do one last torch because my cells have gotten a little overstretched and I want to see what I can bring up before I call it done. Okay, let me give those a chance to grow. And in the meantime, I will pull up some of this paint from the table and cover the edges that did not get covered while I was stretching it. Okay, so I've covered my edges. The cells have not grown much, probably because they need to be stretched out somewhat. So I'm just going to tilt the paint around just a little bit, see if I can get my composition how I like it. Okay, I wish there wasn't all this white here. I don't know why the other colors didn't show up there. But anyway, I'll give you a close up and um, then we'll be done. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, so these little cells right here, those were brought up by the torch. That is the thing that I like with using glue and a torch, and these ones here also were brought up by the torch. The torch makes very pretty kind of, you can choose the location of your bubbles. Now here I just kind of put them everywhere because mostly I was trying to break up all of this white, see if I could bring up other colors. So this just kind of looks like a mess of bubbles. Um, but it gives you an idea of the kind of things that you can do using a different pouring medium. All right, thanks for joining me. I hope you come back and watch some of my other videos. See you next time. Bye.